So we're off. We are. This is the next leg of our journey, right? The next part of our adventure. Yeah, we get a long ride. We're gonna do the Cabot Trail. We're about 90 miles, an hour and a half to the Cabot Trail, and uh, glad we left the time we did. We're 66 kilometers to the Cabot Trail. Oh, 90 miles, miles to no. Chitty Camp. No, oh, okay. It's Chitty Camp, kilometers. City Camp. Okay, so we're 66 kilometers, which is- From where? From when we turned on that road. <laughs> to where though? To the Cabot Trail, the beginning oh, of the Cabot Trail. All right, so that's um, then. about 40 miles. Yeah, so we got up super early. I'm still half asleep. We did a lot, most of our packing a little bit last night, but still you get that last minute crunch. And I, I will highly recommend the, the Airbnb we stayed at for sure. We're gonna definitely- yeah, they treated us like family. Like family, place was immaculate. If you like harbor views, you'll love it. It overlooks the harbor, uh, down a hill to the harbor. So you don't have like direct access unless you wanna walk down the hill, which you could. But um, then there's a little road and I walked right down to the beach the first day we were there. I think I did some clips in my previous vlog. So that was um, it was pretty awesome. So this leg of our journey is Cabot Trail. It is foggy out. <laughs> well, it seems more overcast than foggy. Overcast, so I don't mind overcast days because then it's less hot. But I'm hoping the, you know we get some views, so. Cabot Trail, going over to the east side of the Cabot Trail. We're going to see some hopefully mighty Atlantic Ocean and then wind our way down to the, um, I forgot the name of the town, Boylston, yeah, of where we are staying in an Airbnb where we have the entire house. So that should be pretty cool. Cool. Bye, guys. So this is just uh, the beginning of our journey on the Cabot Trail. It's still a little foggy. Yes, I have my sunglasses on. You know, because the prescription, I can see a little bit better. But, um, so we're hoping the fog burns off. And this is just a turn off on the road. It is gorgeous, if you ask me. What do you think, honey? Beautiful. Fog and all. So we're taking a little, um, Jay just uh, refilled, because we've got our cooler and all sorts of whatnot. So he's making an iced coffee and you know, perfect place to stretch. I'm gonna turn around so you can see what's in front of me. It's probably really hard for you to see how beautiful this is because of the fog but this is a very dramatic coastline all rocks there's some fishermen out there and it's just beautiful it is just just beautiful and this is this is probably nothing compared to what we will see I don't know if people can see. Let's try to raise it. So the fog's burned off a little bit, but it is still, still kind of hazy. But I think that's gonna make it a little bit more of a comfortable ride, heat-wise, I think. So we don't know where we are, but <laughs> we're a little further up the road. And, you know, the one thing I have to say is that even though I mean, I was saying to Jay, if this was Acadia National Park or any of our national parks in New Hampshire, it would be crowded with people. But we really, I mean, there's, there's hardly anyone here. We've seen a few buses, we've seen a few tourists, but in general, it's been amazingly uncrowded. So it's beautiful. Cabot Trail, I think we're at Pleasant Bay. I'm not too sure. And uh, they're doing some construction, so the rest of the road, or at least the next part of this road, is going to be gravel. And I am hoping that it's not too bumpy, but who knows? I'm so happy. I'm so happy that we came. It's just, it's just, 
I don't know. Breathtaking. Breathtaking. Ridge. That was one steep, steep descent. It was also a steep climb. Whew. We still have a long way to go. We do, but it is absolutely gorgeous. Right, baby? We were up there, winding around in those trees up there. So we drove all through Cape Breton Highlands. Oh, it was a little dicey at times, but it was absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And now we are on the East Coast side. We got open ocean behind us, and we're heading down to Inver um, Inganesh. And then there's a beach there. We'll probably have a little picnic lunch there. And then we will continue on our journey south. So this is the top of the stairs to this Airbnb that we're staying in. And this is our deck. Two chairs, a grill. Oh, beautiful breeze. Looking the harbor. It's lovely. Yeah, what so this is stepping in. You can see we already have some of our, our stuff spread out. But isn't this just absolutely lovely? I don't know if you can catch the views out that side window, but that is harbor and ocean. Harbor and ocean. There's the deck I walked in. Kitchen. Lovely bath with um, pocket doors to close off the hopper area and the sink area from the shower area. Really beautiful harbor views there. I'm like so impressed with this unit. I said to Jay, I said, I'm not too sure I want to leave here. We're only staying here for two nights. I'm thinking this is gonna be a romantic place to stay. If I can ever get him to um, relax and enjoy it, stop working. I'm really pleased, you know, sometimes when you select um, accommodations like Airbnbs, you don't really know what to expect because people are only gonna show the best photos of their property. And uh, we have so far on this trip stayed in three, this is our fourth Airbnb. And this one has exceeded my expectations, exceeded it. The one before this was, I was, I was in heaven. I loved it. We also overlooked a harbor. We spent two days there as well. That exceeded my expectations. That one, um, the hosts were so super friendly. They had, they had, you know, just really thought of everything that you, you really needed. This one, the views are, are better in the sense of that we're right on the harbor but of course this is in a whole different area and it is like so neat and clean and the host had said who greeted us is super super friendly he has said that um, they've only been doing this for like seven weeks or something and they're already getting repeat people and i can see why i really don't think i want to leave <laughs> i really don't so um it is it is sort of off the beaten track but I think this is a kickback, relax type of a, a place. So we just arrived and I'm loving it. Good morning world. 
We slept like babies last night. Well, that's not the right thing because babies always wake up. We didn't. We were snug as a bug and we slept the whole night through. It was so quiet, so peaceful. We, we, just, we just enjoyed it. So I'm on my deck. I'm going to scan down so you can kind of see. There's a little bit of a yard in front of the deck area here and then some flowers and then it goes down to a gravelly, rocky, I don't know, beach or walkway. It, this is salt water so it is tidal and the tide is not like a place that where the tides go way in and way out dramatically so it's more of a you know i think the the water never empties out here so we never had any mud flats or anything it just probably i'm guessing maybe might have come up another six feet <clears throat> and over here you can see a little bit more of a a beachy area the owner has another dock over there in their yard. I cannot <coughs> recommend this Airbnb as uh, enough, to be honest with you, because So we have arrived at our destination for the next two nights, three days in the Halifax area. We're in a little bed and breakfast Airbnb in Hackett's Cove and we're sitting on our private deck. This is a amazing little rustic location. Beautiful. And they have like a seawall protecting a little covey area right on the property where you can actually go swimming. Let me turn it around so you can see where we are. These are the views right off of our deck. And there's the man. I can get up and show you. We're at Peggy's Cove. Well, we're not at Peggy's Cove. We're at the site of the Swiss air crash. And, um, this is just such a somber, somber spot, you know, to know that 229 people, men, women, and children that were aboard the Swiss Air Flight 111 uh, died here back in September 2nd, 1998, it says. I remember watching the news reports of that. I remember thinking how awfully sad some cold waters out there. Just an incredibly somber place just to think of how horrific that whole accident was or conspiracy as some people think. You can see the lighthouse way off in the distance but I don't know, it's kind of chilling. We've talked to a few locals and this is an area or a topic that is very sensitive to many because so many of them lived through those, that time. They were here. Some of them that we talked to were on the rescue missions. So yeah, we um, took our life in our hands and we're going out on a boat. Wave for my vlog. Hi there. Hi there. Hi there. Other 
so I have to have my uh, land legs back. <laughs> that was one heck of a ride, I'll tell you. One heck of a boat ride. And I think it was really cool because the there was nobody on the boat. <laughs> and I think the captain was like, I don't know, it was almost like riding a bull. <laughs> he was riding those waves and those, the surf, and it was pretty <laughs> ferocious, but oh my gosh, I didn't expect to do that today, but that's, um, <laughs> that was fun. Jay got his pants all wet. <laughs> Not because he peed them, but because he got them all wet. So that was really, really wild. <laughs> so low tide. When the tide is in, this dock would be a lot straighter. But this is the the dock at my Airbnb. You want to talk about Down East, and that's the house up there. And we are on the top floor, so that's kind of cool because. There really isn't anyone underneath us, and we have our own private quarters. The only thing we share is the kitchen, if we want. Oh, it's beautiful, peaceful, very much ocean setting. Even though from our deck, because of the pine trees, it might even seem more like a lake setting. But, yeah. rustic, down east. Oh, good morning, world. Jay and I are heading out to meet Fred this morning. And last night we had the prettiest, prettiest sunset. It was really, it was really pretty, and I actually put my iPhone on a time lapse, and I caught most of it, but I wish I had my phone at a little bit of a different angle, because it kind of went down behind a tree, and I was aiming between the two trees, so if we get back early enough tonight, I'm going to try to do it again. If not, I'm going to insert the first one, so you guys can see the sunset. It's beautiful. Happy birthday, America. This is the sunset on 4th of July. If you look closely, closely, way up on the upper left side, you'll see this tiny speck. That is Venus, going to show up just about now. See it? That's Venus. Happy birthday, America. Historic properties, I think Fred said. Yeah. Historic properties. I guess this is the wharf. There's lots of shops. There's certainly lots of restaurants all around. It's kind of really cool. Handcrafted ales. What is this place called, Fred? So this place, to the locals, is called the Dingle. That's such a weird name. And it's such a weird name, but I think the story behind it, and I'm not 100% sure, there's a tower straight up through the trees there, and we'll drive by it after, but it used to have a bell in it that would ding. Wow. So I think that's where they got it from. That's but where they I, got Dingle, that's, huh? That's one story I heard. But the true name is Sir, Flan Sir Francis Fleming Park. Ah, I think I had a bit of a... A dirty mind on the dingle. Oh. <laughs> right, Jay? You just had to ruin it for me, didn't you? <laughs> I was like, uh oh. Yeah, I definitely see how wide my. That's my nice, lens. though. I, like I can that. come a little closer. Wow. But. Yeah, that's nice. I like that. I like it wide like that. Yeah. I guess I showed my true perverted self <laughs> having a dirty mind over the the Dingle name. <laughs> I mean, who names a park the Dingle, right? It was really awesome meeting Fred the Canadian daily on YouTube, and I will link his channel below. He took us all over the place. He was just an awesome host and tour guide. And then we went over to the other side of the harbor and we had a wonderful lunch and then he brought us back to his place and he showed us his private Lego collection. If you're into Star Wars and 
or any Lego. I mean, it's it, it was mind-boggling to see what he had collected, what he had put together. What an amazing treat. I never expected to see this. It was just super, super sweet. And he is an awesome guy. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much, Fred. It is. Oh, I don't have my Apple Watch on. What is today's date? Sixth. July 6th, guys. And we are on the vacation wind down. I swear, I think we're going to need a vacation from this vacation when we get home. <laughs> I know, it's exhausting. <laughs> we really have exhausted ourselves. I think this is the type of vacation where we were extremely active. We went all over the place. A ton of driving. I mean, if you think about, we went all the way up to New Brunswick to get to Cape Breton Island, drove... 1,535 miles so far we've driven from home. Wow, that's that's a lot of mileage. That is a lot of mileage. A lot of driving because he only let me drive once. I'm a better navigator than a driver, he says. Yeah. <laughs> Not that he listens to me when I tell him where to go half the time. <laughs> well, you do sometimes, right? Yeah, well, how did we get lost? Because you didn't wait for me to answer. <laughs> you just went your own way. <laughs> yeah, that's not true. And then, typically, typical guy, he never stops and asks for directions. I must have said four times, stop, get directions. No, he just kept going. And then finally he stops, gets directions, and we turn around and we go back. But we truthfully only misplaced ourselves a couple of times. Yeah, not bad for 1,500 miles. Yeah, and for old folks. Old folks. So tomorrow morning we leave our Airbnb in Hackett's Grove and we head down to Yarmouth. Yesterday was an awesome day with Fred. I, I um, enclosed some of the clips and we just he just took us all over the place. Uh, did sightseeing with him and it was it was really nice. We had a great day and exhausted again. And this morning Jay got up early and he golfed. Did you take any pictures? No, it was too foggy. It's too foggy. And now we're heading to Lunenburg, which is a town that Natalie the Beauty Diva highly recommended, as well as a number of other people had recommended that we check out. So we're heading to Lunenburg. And uh, who knows, we might stop here and there or whatever, and I don't know, we'll see what the day brings. Yeah, the loony bird's going to Lunenburg. Ooh, sounds good. Ciao. Bye, guys. Hey, guys, so it's Saturday morning. July 7th and we are leaving the Peggy's Cove area but we decided to take a quick ride through one more time early in the morning and I'm going to insert this clip of our drive through Peggy's Cove for you all to see because it's really a cute cute little cove. I was really surprised that there was hardly any traffic but really it was super super early on a Saturday morning and it was just, I think, the perfect time to go back to Peggy's Cove and drive all the way up to the lighthouse. So this isn't a super long clip, but it'll give you a feel, minus the tons of tourists walking around, it'll give you a feel of what Peggy's Cove is like. So as you can see, there's some quaint homes and some shops lining the road. And as we turn the bend here, you'll see a little bit more of the harbor. And you'll come upon where Jay and I actually went out on that boat ride the other day. Oh my gosh, that was a boat ride to remember. Yeah, and Jay had taken uh, a picture of the boat, so he emailed it to the captain, and the captain's going to put it on his little uh, stand there. So as we continue further up, you'll start to see as we turn in the actual, the very famous lighthouse at Peggy's Cove. This is quite the tourist attraction. And the other day when we came, we couldn't find parking here. It was jam-packed with people but such a pretty little area, and I really am thrilled that we're able to do this little ride through. I must say that both Jay and I have been thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly impressed with the folks in Nova Scotia. Not only are the people all very friendly, but almost every town we were in had 
rest areas and places to stop, clean facilities, places to have picnic lunches. It's just really, I think Nova Scotia is just a really friendly, friendly place to visit. And life is relaxed, low key. And if you like ocean and if you like salt water and lobsters, oh my gosh, this is definitely a place to see. So Jay has jumped out to take some pictures. He's done some awesome, awesome photos that he'll probably eventually, when we have good solid Wi-Fi, put up on his Facebook page. But he's taken some really great shots. Next up for us is heading south, our trip down to Yarmouth and the ferry home. So I'm going to end vlog number two. This is our second part of our Canadian trip. For those of you that have watched it and watched the first one, I truly appreciate it. And thank you for all your comments, your likes. It, Wi-Fi has been a challenge. Yes, there's great Wi-Fi in restaurants. Uh, most, most of it is free. You can get a password if you ask. But in some of the units that we stayed at, um, Airbnbs, the Wi-Fi has been very spotty to almost non-existent or enough to be able to download email and maybe send a text um, if you want. And then, of course, you know, we bought a data package for the cell, but that's costly and it's very quick to go over that. So, you know, I'm going to try to upload this vlog in Yarmouth and, um, and then there'll be bits of part three and I'm going to share with you some of the things that I've been doing for my skincare while I've been away and products I've been using. So thanks so much for watching guys. Truly appreciate it. Hope you all had a wonderful fourth and I will catch you later.